What's up everyone? This video we're going to talk about foreign keys, specifically on delete and on update. This is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2, but you guys know that so let's not waste any time. Let's get started. On delete, oh, why does it always look crooked? Is the... On delete is a way we can configure the way our foreign key works. So let's go back to the parent-child relationship concept from the last video. And last video is basically a prerequisite to this video because I'm going to waste all my time repeating all that information. So we have a parent row and a child row. And this child row obviously references the parent using a foreign key. So this table will have a column such as ID and then this table will have oh, parent ID, whatever the parent is. So it could be like user ID or whatever. And then that value references the parent. But what happens if we try to delete this parent row? Oh no! And I bet you, you cannot guess what clause is used to configure that. Yeah, didn't think so, moron. It's on delete. <laughs> okay, I'm so mean. Yeah, I'm keep it. Yeah, I'm keeping it in. So on delete can be added after we define our foreign keys and we can say what happens when we delete the parent. And there's four main options in SQL Server. No action, cascade, set null, and set default. We are going to discuss each one of these in a little bit of detail. The first one is no action. That is actually the default. So if you don't say anything and you just say this is a foreign key that references this column, this is the one that's going to be applied. What that means is if you try to delete a parent, it's just gonna throw an error and say, you can't do this, you cannot do this. Essentially what that means is that once a child references a parent, that parent is locked into existence until that child is no longer there. No action is probably the most safe one you can use because once you start having all these tables and all these references and this child references this one and this one references this parent. <laughs> you got this huge network of connections and when you have no action, you basically can't break any of those connections accidentally. But this has the downside and that it makes it really hard to do anything. Because if you have this chain, for example, this row referencing this row, this row referencing this row, you have to find the most childish of all the children. Because <laughs> if you think about it, this child has a parent, which is this child, which has a parent, which has a parent, this parent. So it's like a literal family tree. You would have to start with this child, delete that row, and then you could delete this row, then you could delete this row, and then finally you could delete the parent. So if you want to delete the parent, you're going to have to go through all of that work. Cascade, on the other hand, comes in handy because if you delete the parent, it's automatically going to pass on those changes and just delete anything that references it. But as you can see, that could be very dangerous because you have all these connections and you don't have all the connections memorized in your head. So you just, you just think you're gonna do something minor. It's not gonna ruin much. You're just gonna delete this one row. No one will even notice. Then all of a sudden you delete like 40 rows because everything's interconnected. <laughs> so Cascade will delete all of the children referencing that parent. Set null, that one is going to set the reference and the child to null. So if this parent has an ID of seven and in the foreign key column we have that reference and then we delete this parent, this seven is going to be replaced with null. That one's fairly simple, but you're going to have to keep in mind that this column that's storing this value has to be able to be set to null. Therefore, it cannot be labeled not null. If it was labeled not null, you wouldn't be able to do that because then you'd try to put a null inside of a not null column. And that's just gonna make your database explode. Finally, we have set default. And what that is going to do is set the column to whatever the default value is for that column. When you define the column, you can use the default attribute and give it a value. And then when you delete the parent, that value of like originally it was seven will be replaced with whatever the default is. So the parent has a value of seven, the child references that parent. And let's say the default is one. We delete the parent row, the child reference is replaced with one. Now, when would this be beneficial? Well, a lot of people actually don't like set default, but some people really like it. A good use of this might be, let's say in a situation where we have a website and people can post comments. 
So we could make a user in the user table with the ID of one and make the username deleted user, for example. And let's say we also have a user, Caleb, and his ID is seven and deleted user ID is one. Now the parent exists, his name's Caleb, the child is his comment, and this comment was posted by the person with the ID of seven, which points back to Caleb. But then once we delete the parent, the seven is defaulted to one, which points to deleted user. That's kind of a way you could use the set default. I'm sure there's a much more professional and technical explanation of how you could use set default, but that's all my little brain could come up with. <laughs> so if you guys got some more better examples, post them in the comments below and I'll consider them for future videos and I'm sure they'll be helpful to other people. Now there is also an on update clause. This is going to work the same way because we also have these options. The only difference, it's no longer on delete, but what happens when the parent's ID in this situation seven is changed? Now, if you used my guidelines on primary keys, they should never change. So the only time you're going to need the on update is if you're referencing a unique column that is not a key. For example, you might have a users table with an ID and a username. And this username is unique. Now let's say we have a username of crazy cat lady 10. And this lady has an ID of eight. That is not an eight. <laughs> and then let's say we reference this column, which we can do with the foreign key because it's labeled unique. Now, instead of having an ID, we'll just have the username. Now the on update is going to make a lot more sense. So what would happen if someone tried to update their username? Well, let's go through the options. The first one, if we had our foreign key set up as no action, the database is just going to throw an error and say, no bro, you cannot do this. Is that appropriate? Well, in some situations, yes, but some websites let you change your username. For example, YouTube. So if we wanted people to be able to change their username, we would not want to use no action. Cascade would send the changes down the line. So if we changed this to crazy cat lady 11, it would go down over here to the reference and change it as well. That would be more like what YouTube is doing. So that means any comment that references this username would change. Set null would change this username to null. And finally, set default would change it to whatever the default username is. So whatever this table's in, we would have a column, let's say username, and this could be in whatever table, it doesn't matter, and you would give it a default. So hopefully that kind of gives you a good summary of on delete and on update. It kind of gets complex, but if you just break it down piece by piece, you'll eventually get it. So thanks guys. If you like this video, please click like, subscribe, and um, send me some money to uh, replace my lungs from all this chalk dust. <laughs> Kidding, but I mean, still send me money. <laughs> okay. Thanks guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.